Hey Richard and Unix Psycho. Just quickly trying to get a little more room here. Seems like the um, workshop pixies are being hard at work here and messing up my workbench. Filling it up with unnecessary tools all over the place. Right. That's a bit better. Stacy, sorry, Stackle, Stackle, Thomas Logic, Tyler D, Imran. Okie dokie. Well, we're going to actually return to a job that we got most of the way through a week or so ago, maybe longer than a week. We were just waiting on a part. So and that's this MSI laptop. Finally, the part arrived, so I guess better get that done because the poor chap that's waiting for it has probably been sent back a year at school because they didn't get their assignments in. Alright, switch over to desktop. There we go. Did I wash my hands? No, I, I just encapsulate all the coronavirus in my glove, sweat it out a bit more, bottle it up and then send it off to New York. you got to be kidding me. Come on. There's uh, naturally got an alignment issue. But I should be able to resolve this one, hopefully. How does one remove Windows from a MacBook? Uh, just I'd imagine format the disk, just use, when you boot Mac OS, go into the disk repair tool or something like that, or disk, um, and just blitz all the partitions. Okay, what the heck, Foxconn? So the alignment's right, except it's just a wee bit short. Okay. Damn it, I hate this. This is why I hate PCs so much. It's like 90% right, but not right. Yeah, what do I do with the old one? Uh, now I've got to work out what the heck I'm going to do. So I guess the easiest thing is to just pull out the center probe and get it into there. But uh, this is so typical, so damn typical. Okay, we just need to get that little bit of solder there out. It's warm in here. And what doesn't help is that someone decided at about 6 o'clock this morning they were going to light up all their yard rubbish across, you know, just next door or something around that. And subsequently, uh, all the smoke just billowed into the house and woke us up, thinking the place was on fire. I mean, obviously not really, but it was pretty bad. That's the one, Combat Wombat, yes. Uh, it's uh, another case of the fact that you get the right connector for the right board, but it's the wrong connector. So thank you very much. Yeah, that's not going to come out with the soldering iron, especially not a micro, so we're going to... Mm, use a bit of more wick. Now the problem here is I don't want to mess up the USB uh, 3 connector next to it. So that's why I'm not going in just with flat out hot air. Because you can pretty much guarantee that if you do that, you will take out that USB connector. 
switching over to my JSO2 tip. Yeah, micro USB ports are another bad one. Or any USB ports. They've all got their own billion variations of everything. Still not perfect. Hopefully this will function though. Hey Giffany. Hey Brian. Yeah, Carbon, I mean, I can do that, but there's always... You always sort of tend to miss something and there's a bit of a blowback somewhere. Yeah, I can't believe this. I can't believe that I'm going to have to bend this pin out. Frickin' useless. The worst thing is it's probably not even quite capable of handling that bending. Okay. It's still not ideal. No, it's going to have to come up a bit more. It's going to cause fracturing. Hey Jane Zimmy. Hey Paul Bridgman, how's things down in Tassie? Hey, you guys are thinking of self-isolating from the rest of the main... You know, you probably should have done that like 200 years ago. Could have saved a whole lot of drama. So, microphone seems okay. I'll replace it anyway. I'll try that for size. Hey, brass cog. Okay, so now it fits right in terms of its flush and everything, but I don't see how we can put a bend in that safely. So I'm just basically going to have to do a horrendous blob solder over the whole lot and hope that the solder has enough... Um, I hope there's enough solder that the resistance will be low enough that it's not going to cause any issues. But, uh, welcome to why I hate PCs so much. Hey Kevin Whitehouse. Hey Randy Bates. 
Yeah, I tried calling Lewis this morning and um, I must admit I got the phone number wrong initially. As much as I wanted to blame that on him, it wasn't on, that was on me. But the worst thing is I actually couldn't really understand anything that was being said. So I was just talking gibberish and he was talking gibberish and... Yeah. Yeah, I just need to prop this board up a little bit. Uh, I was thinking of that Pedro, but uh, I'll see how the flood goes. I'll see how the flood goes. And for this I'll actually use my fat solder, which I rarely use. And by fat I mean this is like 0.56 mil or something. And it's just huge. It's like handling rebar. It's the rebar of micro soldering. Do you use 1.2 mil for it? Oh my goodness. I use 15 thou as my preference. 15 thou, it's 0.38 millimeters. Mm. And how you people can use such thick, nasty solder. All right, you can see those ones have come through nicely. See how by holding the soldering iron on for a long time, it let the solder wick through nicely and formed a good fillet around the both those. This one doesn't quite look as good because the flux is in the way. No, we'll do the same for these ones. Hey Corey. If you're doing three hole through hole then yeah big stuff definitely makes sense. Because you gotta really you know throw in a lot to get them to fill up those holes. No, that's still not the right orientation for me. Um, there we are. Uh, jumped on that one a little soon. That's not going to be a good one. I'll have to redo that. This is where the chisel tips perhaps are a little more appropriate. Think about this a little more. I oh mean, your little buggers didn't come up. If I had tried to, if I had tried to put a, a new radius on this, it likely would have just fatigued and snapped. I have a bad habit of doing it.
Uh, Daniel M, no different here in Australia. Even in this town. No one's got toilet paper. So we got lucky, we happened to just do our normally, normal monthly purchase just prior to the insanity descending. But for other people, not so lucky. What this does illustrate though is how precarious our current system of efficiency is in the sense that uh, businesses try to make sure they absolutely you know, running at 99.99% efficiency they don't produce more than they should um, you know, very much on demand only there's no um, what's the word I'm after there's no reserve in our system to handle these sort of events. All the production is done based on what is expected on a daily basis and maintains that so there's no excessive backlog or anything like that. And as a consequence when these sort of events come along it, um, you know, we just don't have enough because people take more than what is expected for a given day. I mean, I know the local shop here, it basically gets supplied every day by a truck. And that's it. It's, uh, it's a daily thing. There's no week-long storage or anything like that. To be fair, the local store just doesn't have the storage room either. Just-in-time manufacturing. Thank you very much, Defcom. Thank you for putting into a simplified way what I was trying to say yes just in time manufacturing Hello, Mr. Russia. Oh, shoot sake. I yanked on that too hard and pulled it right out. Damn it. Now I've got to thread it through again. I do have a MacBook after this, so don't go away. Just thought I'd get this one out of the way because I know the poor chaps are fretting a bit. Shame and I felt like I did a really nice job the first time. watched it now. Probably what would have been better for this is something like um, single core Cat5 cable.
Yeah, Giffany, I mean, I could have tinned him, but I was kind of hoping I wouldn't have to. I was just honestly just hoping I could get him to hold together long enough that I didn't have to tin the damn things. Yeah, that just sucked through, so hopefully it's done the job. Well, it's wicked up to the back of it, underside, so hopefully a little more and it should be good. And now we need more flux. It's the only job with these connectors, you really need to just drown the flux in it. There we go. <sighs> Given it was a case of going in, being hopeful, and then being proven wrong. It worked the first time, but then I yanked on it too hard. Seth, what the heck are you saying not funny about? I don't think I was trying to be funny anywhere. I guess we constantly are always <coughs> trying to weigh up risks and gambles and sort of go, well, can I get away with doing this? There's a chance it's not going to go as planned, but if it does go to plan, I will save myself this much time. If it doesn't go to plan, I'll lose this much time. So you're constantly weighing that up. It's a bit like, do you test your iPhone screen operation before you close it up or after you close it up? Things like that. Well, it looks nasty bulbous, but it actually is meant to be. And we've got one spare one for the next time that this laptop never shows up in the workshop. You can guarantee if I didn't get the spare one, I would have broken it in this process. And then I would have been saying, I should have got a spare one. <coughs> exactly, Rick Tech. If you don't test it before, yep. Alright, now the real fun part. Remembering how the heck to put this machine back together. screws I guess I better redo their paste
You're in the wrong place, spider. Go away. There's a spider down here just looking for trouble. Yeah, it's a gaming machine. It's an MSI gaming machine of some sort. Personally, not really a fan of the old idea of laptop gaming. I mean, I get it. It just seems like they're always... I don't know. They don't live very long, that's for sure. In general. Okay, CPU bonding. I'm gonna make these guys cry because I'm just gonna use Arctic Aluminia. I'm not gonna use liquid metal or any other bling bling name stuff. Good old boring standard traditional nothing fancy Arctic Aluminia. I can hear them crying now. But no, for the love of God, man, put something fancy on it. How will I be able to boast to my friends otherwise? They'll make fun of me for only having standard heat sink, heat compound material on there. What have you done to me? Okay. Something's holding the heat sink up a bit. Ah, right. Looks like it needs a bit of elevation. Uh. Thankfully I didn't lose any of those the um, silicon pads they can be a major pain to replace to get the right thickness and everything it doesn't have to be perfect but it really is nice if you can Ah, shoot. Right. Which screws for the heat sinks? Crap. I'm going to have to go back over the old video, I think. And see which one's for, for what. And why have I got this big cluster in here? Damn it. Yep. Oh, come on. I'm going to guess they're like those ones. But there's quite a few like those, and I need three of them. And there's no set of three in here other than these silver ones, and the silver ones are probably be too big. I can't believe I've done this. Use the force, right, yes. As in, let's force it to work using force. Okay, I'm going to have to go back and look at my old videos. 
That's a bit embarrassing. <laughs> Damn it. I don't even remember what day it was. Uh, Thomas Logic, that's why um, that's why I always video record everything because this is exactly the situation that I run into. Does one heatsink mount have three screws and the other four? Yes, this is a three screw setup, this is a four. The four one, they were already locked in onto the assembly. Oh yeah, def I'm just pull out the lathe, that's a good idea. I, that is the normal solution, the proper solution. And plenty of screws, but what I'm confused about is why did I cluster them like this? So if I had to take a guess, I would say it is this three here. Because like there's no other yes there is bugger. I was gonna say there's only three of them, but nope, there's four. So that eliminates that set, I think. Uh, PCs, who needs them? They can't be very long screws. Because these are just mainboard... Um, nuts, uh, blind nuts. And then you wonder, is this even the container for the screws? Did I pick up the wrong container? Yeah, you start questioning yourself like that. I'm just going to prove to myself that this is not the correct screw. And yet, strangely, they go all the way through, so they're actually not blind nuts, they're through nuts. Oh, they're through nuts. Oh, nuts. Okay, maybe we'll use this three then. I still probably be the wrong ones. Okay, I'm just going to loosen them slightly, like so, and then do the squishy dance on this. And the reason why I do that, now I hold it steady, is that it causes the thermal compound to spread out a bit more, it shortens the distance between the heat sink and the die, which improves the thermal transfer efficiency. Okay, and plug in the fan, that's something that I have done in the past where I forgot and you finish the assembly of the computer only to find that you have to go back and do it all again because you forgot to plug the fan in. It seems like these should be connected, I think it's one, two, there should be a number three somewhere.
That's weird. I did not put that captain tape on those parts. Hmm. Wasn't me. I might plug in the power, see if it goes kablamey. At least with the heat sinks on now, it shouldn't be bad. Better to check for the great big kaboom before it puts any drives in there. Where's my chipmunk? Where the hell's my chipmunk? I'm guessing this is the on-off button. Maybe not. Do you have voltage? Oh. Sorry, camera. Never forgive me. Yeah, we've got voltage. Well, gosh, I'm normally it doesn't get mixed up. That's the point. That's that's why I have these multi units. They don't mix between each other. It's just that I haven't labeled them. Yeah, if I go back on the video, I'll be able to see what I'm doing. So I do have the voltage there. So they don't get mixed up between each other. These aren't porous. They don't just slip between the panels. CPU has Corona, that's harsh. Yeah, nothing's turning on. I've got voltage there, but nothing's turning on. I hope it didn't take out a bunch of other stuff. It's gonna suck if it did. In which case it'll all be for naught. I won't get my money, they won't get their... Everybody will be unhappy. Plug the SSD. I am not plugging the SSD in. Not even going to go there. That's just no. Not happening. Not happening until I can confirm that everything is good. Plugging in the SSD at this point is probably that's just begging for the system to have a major fault that will result in the death of their data.
Yeah, let me guess. You've got to go through you. Why? Really? People complain about Apple design, but come on, these guys. That just sucks. You want me to thread through there? Yeah, I only have a connect drives once I can confirm that there is uh, everything is all okay. I do the same with the MacBooks. No, I'm not. It's not the fan spin I'm looking for. There's basically just no activity at all anywhere. Okay, so you're a TP here. Where the heck do you go? You're on the underside, aren't you? Stupid, stupid PCs. Yes, sir, you are on the underside. Frackin' hack. Well, at least you're an edge mount. Thinking I'm going to have to pivot the board that way, connect these up, flip it back, thread it through. Yeah, power button, you're right. So what is that? Must be just a reset button. So I feel better at least about that. I don't recall it being this tricky to get out in the first place, but who knows? Okay, so. I mean, if you do these every day, that's fine. In the sense of, if you do a particular model or series, much like, I guess, really with the MacBooks, you do the same model enough times, you you get used to it. I just don't recall it being quite this complicated. Get the Wi-Fi cables out. Things are generally always easier when you're disassembling. Generally. Not always. Speakers. Uh, let's see, trackpad.
Is it difficult now? I didn't want to test it without the heatsink fan assembly, I'm sorry. It's just not the way I do things. I come from the era of the instant death Athlon. And I don't want to relive that guilt and shame. There's a lot of ways you could do it, gosh, but I'm fine to just keep tracking along like this. It's kind of like when people watch Lewis work on his um, Bafang, and the man, the people that lose their heads. That's a pretty messy connector, though. So the battery. I don't need to plug the battery in, I'm just getting it for sizing evaluation here. Okay. Lovely, they use adhesive, that's always fantastic. Why bother using screws when you can use adhesive? Yeah, I just need to plug in the power button. I'm just going to drop some screws in here. It's not the right screw, but that doesn't matter. Not this time around. Let's just say the main board doesn't flop out at me when I open this up I swear it almost feels like I never opened this oops ok, power in ok, we're up Obviously we're not going to get a flashing folder, but we do get that. So it's good. Alright, that's good. I'm happy with that. I am actually going to stop this at this point and get on with the MacBook. Because really from here what I want to do is check the old video, make sure I do the screw sequencing right. <sighs> But at least with the MacBook here, we can get on with things straight away. We ag achieved our requirement here, as in we made sure it rained, so that was good. Yeah. Yeah. Let's return to the comfort of familiarity here. This is a liquid damage, supposedly no backlight. Supposedly. At least it's listed as liquid damage, so that's a good start. As opposed to, we don't know what's wrong with it. Which is also fun, if you've got the time. Uh, I'm not sure, it could be a 34, 37, or it could be a 165. The EMC number probably would tell me that, but I'm not paying enough, so I don't know. I only know once I look at the board. Yeah, Greg, that's exactly right. Okay, answer 165. And the world was almost happy. Stick a sticker on. Let's see. 
no massive signs of ingress. There's a little bit up here, but that's more your normal sort of trash. Battery off. Let's get this battery out of here. Hey Pedro. Yeah, Nell better stay the hell away. I already did my duties this morning. I actually called Rossman Group to try and help Lewis, but I was unfortunately no help at all to him. And it wasn't even my fault. It's not my fault that the board views and the schematics aren't complete all the time. Blame the Apple engineers for that one. Okay, someone's yanked on this Wi-Fi cable. I don't even have my glasses on. I can see there's a problem with the Wi-Fi cable to start with. And that's not the primary problem it's in for. But yeah, so yeah, nice one. Nice one, people. That's great. Fantastic. That's probably going to have to be fixed up. Y yep. Bastards. They knew they did that too. They knew that they had yanked on that antenna lead incorrectly and the, they left it for me. Not the person that uh, owns the laptop but the people who evaluated it. They're probably like, oops, that's okay, Paul can fix it. It's like, yes, Paul can fix it but he doesn't like fixing those because they're a major pain in the butt. The easiest thing for me to do really with those is to actually buy these things in a non-crimped state and then get a crimper for it. But the trouble is the crimpers for them, I kid you not, are usually in the couple of hundred dollar range. Yeah, I didn't even... Yeah. Okay, this has been slapped back together. I mean, understandably, they knew it was going to be shipped off to me. But I'm going to guess we've got corrosion on our backlight driver. I mean, Giffany, for many years I did do PC laptops. I really did. I did them all the time, done all sorts of crazy ones. And even drilling through the board to get to a ball on the CPU on the other side and all sorts of stuff. But I am definitely a happier person for having switched to MacBooks as my primary job. And as for the crimps for those things, they're almost always expensive. It doesn't matter whether it's that size, a slightly larger size. You gotta look at crimping tools on Element 14 or RS, and they're all ludicrously expensive. Sure, if you go to somewhere like the local J Car or Hobby Electronics store, they're gonna be $20, but you won't get them for that size. Hey, they left out that screw. Oh, they really did rush job this one. And there's a bit of smudge there, so that could be right over the backlight driver. Oh, we've got liquid damage on there, so we might have to replace that too. There we go. Yeah, I can see there's a great big wash area over the backlight driver area. So definitely our culprit amongst God knows what else. Yeah. Been a while since I had one of these like that. Looks a bit, definitely looks like the, the alien plantation landed right on top of it. 
But now we're gonna have to look for other things. Because we know our rule. Even though we find the smoking gun, it's also important to keep looking. Just in case a couple of other shots were fired. Yeah, there we go, SMC's got a bit of damage. Looks like it didn't get to the SMC, so that's a godsend. But yeah, that's our primary blob. Now it looks like it's being cleaned off. So I'd say they thought they'd have a shot at just scrubbing it down, see if that made it work again. It didn't, so they now yeah, just said, well, pack it up, send it to Paul. And Paul said, okay. Richard, for now I'm just using some very delicate pliers and a couple of um, homemade dyes, but yeah, it would certainly be better to get a proper crimper for those. At least on things like iPhones, you can just replace the whole core, the whole uh, antenna lead. It will not surprise me if the feedback line is dead, so I'll have to watch that. Oh, well, at least we're thinking the same thing, Richard. I mean, they don't even, I don't even have to make them so they're perfect or anything, but just as long as you can get that cup and crush effect, hopefully it should do the job. Yeah, this is a spectacularly good mess, this one. I don't know what fluid it is that they spilt on it, because it's kind of got a weird metallic sandy grey look to it. You can see that feedback pad is completely trashed. If we're lucky, it actually might still have continuity though. To the little nub. So, what we're wanting to see is if this nub here, that's just outside of the chip, if it's still got continuity to the pads just over here. taken out too? God damn. Okay. Seems like we're okay there. But I'm a little worried about this one now. Yeah, that's completely eaten. That's just, that's just fiberglass. What the heck what in, got in here? That's nasty. Wondering whether I should replace the CD3211 as well.
Uh, I'll clean up all the small parts around it. And then I'll put the new pad down. And hopefully we'll get continuity anyway. Think, uh, I really don't think Corona is a biological weapon. I don't think too many rogue states even like to use biological weapons unless they've truly got a suicide mentality. Biological weapons never really work well. They come back and bite you in the butt. Usually worse than it does your enemies. It's just... Pandemics happen. We're just so used to, though, being protected by everything that when it does happen, we're kind of like, oh my god, how did this happen? It's like, well, for hundreds of years, the human population routinely gets attacked by such things. It's nature. But that's a bit boring for some. I certainly... Yeah, it's kind of like when you look up at the stars, if you put your mind to it, you can make out all sorts of different shapes and decide that that's what's actually up there. There's an outline for a scorpion, but really it's just stars. Anyway, that's my perspective. I mean, there's some definitely stuff that goes on that's shonky in governments and stuff, but this sort of thing, yeah. I mean, if you really wanted to go buy a weapon, you'd just keep releasing measles around the place, or, um, well, heck, you could say that the anti-vax people were agents for it. Anyway, that's just going to cause endless debate. That's of no good. We get pandemics all the time. I mean... Look at the SARS and all the rest of them. Damn it, I'm gonna have to take that resistor off because it doesn't look like it's actually taking well. So I have to see what condition the pads are underneath. Whereas you see these ones, they took the solder well, they filleted it up nicely. It's not even a flu, it's a cold. COVID is the coronavirus, which is like the cold, as opposed to influenza virus. And I think chances are a lot of people actually already do have had it now, and we're not even aware of it. Because most of the stats you get, they're all based on people who actually gone in and gotten tested. If there was to be some sort of, as you say, conspiracy or anything, I would simply say that the economic markets are loving it. I would say that they're doing every bit they can to make sure that people slow down on what they're doing, you know, completely change the economics of the globe at the moment so they've got a nice reset and they don't have to get blamed for going through another global financial crisis I mean that's there's no blame to be made for it unlike a war yeah that pad's a goner it's kind of like the un nature gave us a war 
we didn't even have to get angry with each other. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. I appreciate that. This knife tip is too blunt. Need a new one. Uh, Thomas Logic, uh, precisely. I mean, you just look at, just look at what's happening at the supermarkets. Uh. probably going to be more people die due to the behavior they have with this situation than people who like oh, that's probably not true there's there you go. a lot of people are going to die from COVID-19 there's no denying that a lot of people have died and it does require a bit of extra care from us all but hopefully it's a wake-up call to stop people being complacent about other things like influenza because around here if someone's sick you know if you sort of go oh, yeah it's the seasonal flu and someone gets sick with it they go oh, I'm just going to take some tablets I'm going to go into work you know I don't want to miss work so thank you very much butthead so just go in spread the germs around a bit more but no one cares because it's like oh it's just the flu and no one really stops and thinks well the flu's got a pretty damn good kill rate, as it is. Man, it's much nicer with this knife, new tip. We get too complacent with these things, and then we completely lose our head with other things. Ah, the joys of being a human. Now the scary thing about the 1918 flu is that, that we didn't have the population density, we didn't have the travel, um, I mean okay, a lot of people coming back from the war, but there were about three waves of the old Spanish flu from what I recall. So it's, if we had the Spanish flu now, we actually genuinely might have some real trouble. Quite frankly, I'm not too upset about the whole quarantine, isolations, and everything else that's going on at the moment. You know, shutting down venues, shutting down events. I think a lot of the world is actually kind of happy about it because it's like, ah, oh, they get to have a holiday finally. They have to keep doing this. It seems like a lot of the world is quite tired at the moment, and we could all do with a bit of a break. You bastard, you took away the parts that I wanted. Okay, I've got one itty bitty part I need there. If I was, um, if I was an investor, at this point I would be heavily investing in industries that are involved in, um, what do you call it, uh, what do you call the people, preppers. Anything to do with preppers, I would be getting involved with that because you can bet your boots after this is over, the worst, all the normal people are going to be buying up heavy in the preppers type thing. So if you're a bunker maker, medical stuff maker, or dried food maker, or anything like that, man, you'd be going to rock in the money. Does someone confuse Spanish flu with Spanish fly? That's funny. A 
or maybe just use the wrong term. I don't even know if Spanish fly is a legit aphrodisiac. It's more of just an irritant from what I know. But maybe maybe people like that. Okay, Travis, take care. That cap's okay. I think, think thing is, the thing is, we as a general population have stepped away from the self-responsibility of being prepped for anything. You know, we don't grow our own food much anymore. We don't have our own water much. We certainly don't have you know, much in the way of storage. We are at least getting our own power systems, but that's not because we're trying to be preppers. But, you know, just the natural solar systems coming into play and home battery systems. So at least power's being covered. Yeah, I can't get the dag off that one. This resistor down here doesn't look so great either. Uh, some people don't even know how to cook. So I think we've been very blessed, as it were, for the last 40 years or so, 30, 40 years, and we've become complacent like that. So that certainly will be an upside of the outcome of this, is that people will maybe, once again, begin to look to themselves as being, you know, for their own support, rather than constantly looking at the government and saying, what are you going to do for us? Are you going to save us? And so, well... You know, people don't want the government in their lives so much that they, they want that sort of thing, then they're going to have to learn to be a little more self-sufficient. But we do trade our self-sufficiency in order to be able to gain other things. You know, we throw ourselves into our careers focusing very intently on what we do in order to get advancements. But for that, we do need to have someone covering our back for things like food, shelter, and all that sort of thing. So it's the trade-off we make as a as a population, as a community, as a species. We can be all very much more self-sufficient, but we probably won't make advances at the same rate anymore. Hey, Wayne Taylor, how's it going? Good morning. All right, so now I've got to make a it's a bit tricky. I'm going to make a tiny trace down here. Yeah, and everyone's looking for a bailout. That sort of thing really has to come to an end. Uh, now this is a 165. 820 2014 onward MacBook Air as really fat wire for this any more parcels arrive? No, I haven't got any more today, I'm afraid, Wayne. I'm trying to think is was there something I should be looking out for? I've forgotten. I'm sorry, my good chap. Well, why am I talking all Englishy? Must be my Adelaide roots coming through again. I better dye them. Can't have people thinking I'm from some lardy da posh stock in Australia. Yeah, the wire size is a bit chunky. I think I might have to drop back. I'm going to give it a whirl. The plan was to actually... Yeah, I don't think that's going to work. 
and the wire just flew away. That wire literally just flew away. So what I'll probably use is my point 10. The only trouble with the point 10 is that it's enameled. Uh, don't really have any really huge advice there, Mal. Mostly because it ends up being a case of you try your luck, try your different wire sizes, and see how you go. There's so much of the cut and try type behavior that you have to go through with this stuff. Now, that's pretty much the same as what I had. Maybe I'll just go with that. But instead of folding it over, I'll... Uh, I'll see if I can flatten it out. Where's my shield? Yeah, that wire's hanging out with the geckos for sure. Yep, let's use the delicate micro tip for just doing this crap. Need an anvil, that'll be it, yep. Okay, I was going to flatten it out, that's right. This doesn't always work, depends on the wire, depends on how ductile it is. Some wire absolutely hates being drawn anymore. Seems like that one did all right. Now the trouble there, Richard, is that I'm going to have a ball on that chip, so... Ah. And the board keeps jabbing me in the guts. And naturally we end up with it being edge on, so we actually made things worse by drawing it. Who the hell is... Okay, this is going to seem a little kooky at first. I'm actually going to tack it onto there. Actually, physically it might work fine. Just so that when the reballing reflow happens, it doesn't yank it out. And then I can just snip off the end there, hopefully without causing too much damage. Oh, it evolves and you all great. Well, at least it entertains everybody. Okay, now we get ourselves a new driver.
Where did I put them? Come on. That's not very ASMR ish. That's just annoying. And this is my last one until I get my new batch. Which should be here. Whoops. End of the week. Yeah, Mal, it's a backlight driver. What the hell happened to chat? Hey Rob Brown! Took a little longer than planned for some reason. No. Oh well. You have the Kofefe virus. <laughs> okay, now I can just trim that off. That should all be good. Nothing like a nice sharp blade to help. And that looks good. It hasn't merged with the ball next to it, so that makes me happy. I'm a little concerned about this test pad here. But if there is any sort of corrosive activity in there, hopefully the ultrasonic will help clear it out. For most of the board I'm basically relying on ultrasonic. Hey, there's that piece of wire that flew off. Looks like it didn't get very far. Chipmunk, and we'll get our test screen. Ah, what have I caught on my guts? Uh, multimeter leads. Worried I was about to bring down half the town.
Using this cable combination means I don't have to throw the board in and get everything nested up nicely. Instead, I just hook the cable up and it will let me know. Doesn't seem to work so well on 1502 boards though. Okay, it's green light, chipmunks firing up. We've got CPU activity, now we just wait. I can see the screen is energized. Let's turn off that and wait for our blinking folder. Hopefully. If we don't get a blinking folder, it could be just that the backlight trace is actually damaged. Ah, the feedback trace, rather. Still got nothing. Should have been blinking by now. Yeah, we still don't have backlight. It is blinking. Alright, that's fine. Just means we've got to run the feedback trace. Which is not a major issue. First thing I'm going to confirm is that it actually does get to the pad. So this one here. Okay, so we do get that one. So basically what we're doing is, at the, even though it doesn't look like it should go to these, these here are the same thing. It's just a different portion of the same network. Okay, which means basically one of those... Yeah, one... Mm. Oh, well. Yeah, Greg M, I'm kind of thinking I should sell my stocks of IPA. I've got tons of IPA. Pardon me. Well, the trace sure doesn't look there, but yeah, that means nothing. Because it's an internal, internal failure. Hack job start using the wrong tip. Good. That's really messy. I'm not going to leave it like that. I'm just doing it for the sake of quick testing, so to speak. Now, the predicament I have here is that I could bring it around to this pad, but then I risk messing up that pad. So, I'm probably better off just taking it over to this point here, because we know there is a connection between there and there. Rather than messing up the chip work that we've already done.
Ha! Wait. Yes. Sadly, self isolation indeed over here. Alright, let's try that again, see if that works. What is XW component? It's just a link, it's a wire. X is basically mean non specific designation, W would be wire. So, it's what they use to connect two dissimilar named networks so they can still maintain the network names either side without having to put in something like a zero ohm resistor. So it's basically a zero ohm resistor, but it's part of the circuit board. It's about the simplest way I can de describe it. Voltmeter glitching out. Ah, oh, right on the edge. It's because I've got the chat over it. Uh, usually on the top layers. But it really doesn't matter. It's on one of the board layers anyway. In this case, it is one of the surface layers. I can actually lift this up and see if it's glowing. Can't tell. Doesn't look like it. Got something else going on then. Damn it, still nothing. Alright. Something else is at play. Maybe an enable. Hmm. Okay, we can actually close this and it's not going to affect the output. Let's see what the actual voltage rating is, reading is. Maybe the Never as easy as it. Okay, backlight output. Not boosting, okay. So at least we've got connectivity there. Would have been funny if it was actually the fuse in that case, but uh, no such luck. So we're not boosting, which means we're probably not sensing. So at least we've been enabled. Okay, from 5. This cable is so handy for doing this sort of stuff. If I can flip the board around, it's still running. <laughs> 8.5. Okay, so you're seeing 8.5. But you're not boosting. Okay. Hmm. Maybe there's something that this... no. As I say, maybe there's something to do with this trace here that this one does not go to. Like there's a break in here somewhere. Because we definitely have it there, we have it there, but... What other part of the circuitry could there be? So we've got 8.5 here, we've got 8.5 there, and there's really nothing else. Uh, what are you missing, Paul? What are you missing? Well, I guess I'll check those resistors again. Maybe one of them's got a bad end cap on it or something. It's about the only thing I can think of. I 
1128, it's a little bit, it's not massively old, it's a little bit old, but it's not massively old. But certainly you may find that you enjoy 1146, 1147 better. Because it fixes up a few things in the part find section. Like now if you are in the part find section and you click on a part, it will actually um, load up the board view if it can too. Doesn't the one on the left go to the trace on the side of wood? And one yeah, well that's what I'm thinking, Rob. It's like, yeah. So maybe I am going to have to. I guess the next step is now risk messing it up, but I will take it from that point and plug it straight into the feedback. Well, the thing is, I was getting the voltage there. That's what I didn't get. But then, as you say, maybe it's feeding another part. But no, that still doesn't make a lot of sense. God. I ruin lament the moment I do this. Hey, that's a, um, that's a GPU-worthy solder joint, that is. Maybe I just need to press harder with a big conical tip. Hey, Copaz. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very funny. Thanks, Copaz. You did say that you would, and you did. You're a man of your word. The other possibility is the diode's blown its guts out. But we won't explore that one yet. If it doesn't fire up again, I may start looking at replacing things like that diode. Because if the diode doesn't work, if it just uh, lets power go either way, then the whole boost system will not function. It'll try to function, but it won't. Can't actually see 11.7 on the Webby, 11.15, surely... Uh, Mal, you're on the download page. You should check in the alpha, check in the alpha column of the download page. Should be there. Should be one one four seven or one one four something. One one four five at the very least. I'm pretty sure. Oh wait, are you on MacOS? In which case, that it would be why. Because I haven't released a MacOS version. Hey Sonia. Well, something bad went then. What's going on? Okay, I'm energized. I think we've got backlight now. Kind of looks glowy. Blink, you mongrel.
I'm not even booting, are you? Something's catastrophically wrong there. Does that wire short through? So, oh. did that wire, is that touching the ground? It's the only thing I can think of. be pretty unlucky but it's possible uh, Mal you you want the alpha version which is the third column across here okay that is really delicate there So we get now. I think that just must have been touching ground slightly. Joy. second can't just have a simple backlight job can you still nothing CPU is definitely churning at least and it's still flashing what the hell's going on Okay, that's still flashing, and so it's not that. Hmm. So it could be the diode. Oh. Still pretty damn weird, if you ask me. What else have we got? It could be the MOSFET. Oh no, it's internal, isn't it? Yeah, it's an internal MOSFET. Bad screen cable. No, the screen cable. If it was a bad screen cable, it probably wouldn't be giving me the flashing folder, that's for sure. Okay, thankfully I can get that the heck out of the way. So if we can go back to this trace point at least, even though now I've completely ruined what was otherwise a very good original connection. Now it's got a cranky dog leg on it. Yeah, Wayne, I found that the other night. IPA straight in the eyes, that was fun. This is going to spring back. Yeah, yeah, mongrel. Ah, uh, Greg, this is the test screen that I'm using. That's why I'm using it. This isn't the customer screen. So the screen is being detected, it's just not boosting. I 
I'll check the dyad mode on that dyad, funnily enough. That's okay, Greg. Just. Ow! Stab myself with the flipping. So we've got one direction. Yeah, that looks a little sus, guys. Oh, that's for GC, that's why. That's why it's sus. Three volt, that sadly looks pretty good. Although I always thought that should be about 1.2. Oh no, that would have just been the limit of the volt testing. No, that's that's basically what it should be. Ah, uh, Joseph, it is already... The chipmunk's all up and running and fine. Yeah, I had to test that, even though I knew it was okay. this test point down here that's LCD back like enable well, that should be okay because it is enabling it it's just that it doesn't um, boost it Because we are getting the 8.5 volts. Coil crapped. Probably unlikely. It's a bad coil, you would maybe not get the full voltage, but you would get something. Uh, 165, Rob. 165. Well, at this point, what I might do is just knock off all the resistors. What the heck? Why did you fall over for? And check under them. Make sure everything's okay. Yeah. Just kind of weird. Yeah, I just tested D7701, and that's what I was going on. It's like, it's point one two forward mode, which is about right for those diodes. And 3 volts in reverse, which is also about right. And there isn't really a lot of damage here as such. I mean, I could replace it anyway, even though, like I said, the diet mode readings are just fine on it. But I'm disinclined. Given that all the damage was in this area here, it makes more sense that we would find our culprit in here somewhere. So I think I'm just going to wipe out all the resistors, check the pads again, make sure I haven't missed something. Just in case. I don't think these. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, just. Let's try again with all of them. Might as well take that cap off too. Not that it's playing a major part, it's just a decoupler. Wouldn't hurt to get rid of it anyway. Try putting in the green wheelie bin. Ha <laughs> yeah. Oops. 
Okay, so like this joint here, this might be, though it looks intact. Maybe the backlight driver didn't sit down properly. Ah, uh, the fun and games. We'll check to make sure this does have continuity to wherever it's meant to go. And that one in particular is going off to Backlight V-Sync R. Alright. It looks like there's a test pad up here which it should be going to see if they've got continuity there. Yeah, looks good. That's good. Uh, pin five. Yeah, pin 5 is the one that's always classically fail. It's the feedback pin. Yep. Alright, so now I'll get myself a reasonable 165 or 34, 37 board and I'll strip all the parts from it. It's got some parts missing, but overall it's pretty reasonably healthy. It's got two resistors not present on that one. That's okay. Now, Jane Zimmy, define the obvious. Because there could be a few obvious things that I'm missing. It may just be a bad backlight driver, or maybe when I put it down, I cross some balls. Because it doesn't seem like it's operating, so it's entirely possible that some of the balls got crossed. Maybe... Ah, phooey, I've forgotten my orientation. That's ah, this one here. No flux, no orientation. Ah. Someone didn't remember to prepare the pads before putting the things across. Oh, visible fault, yeah, I mean, that's basically where I started from on this. Oh, 
wrong angle pull. That should be enough to tease my part now. That was a lot more work than it should have been for something like that. Great, the cap was already there. Damn it. Failing this, I would say it's probably the backlight driver itself. Perhaps some of the streams got crossed. I need another board. Oh, Sonia, yeah, I mean, go ahead. Yeah. It's no drama to me. Oh, shoot. Really? Son of a gun. I knew I was holding on to that part just to the wrong... I could feel on the tips that I had it in the wrong sort of grip. And sure enough, when I went to put it down, it told me that I did indeed have it in the wrong grip. Alright, now we need yet another board for that. It's only about four boards now that we've stripped clear. Worst case scenario, just find out what the value is and get it out of a book. Mm. 
Yeah, flood everything with flux. And if that still doesn't work, then I'll try another driver. Somehow I have a feeling I'm going to be trying another driver. Ah, James Ewing on a 6 Plus. Is that one being fixed up for touch disease? Or are you one of the rare people that has not been subjected to that on the 6 Plus? I noticed I never really saw too many 6 Plus touch disease faults around here. Yeah, it's, the whole board's probably still a little bit warm, so I just need to back off for a little bit. Give me an opportunity to have some water and change gloves. Uh, and maybe catch up on chat. PS4 HDMI con controller or connector? Uh, you mean connector? Man, I'm a messy drinker. I'm like a dog out of bowl. Just slopping water everywhere. should have my gloves on for this but should have cooled down a bit by now the anticipation is too great I can't put uh, gloves straight back on, otherwise, you know, they just won't go on. They stick too much. So I do have to wait a little bit. Come on, give me back up. But I'm fairly sure that we're going to have to put a new driver on there. And that's going to be fun because... Oh, well, there we go. Hmm. So it was one of those parts. Something was wrong with one of those parts. Either that or maybe, maybe one of the balls under the driver hadn't quite reflowed, although I was fairly damn sure that I got them all, because it did wiggle and dance. So it's fixed. We're alive. Hmm. Well, that's good. So I guess the question is, which part was it? But I guess we'll never know now, but um, at least we are up and running. So that makes me happy. And that pretty much concludes the day for this so far because I've got to go back have a look at the... Uh, well, I've got to find the video for the MSI laptop and play it in reverse so that I can see where all the screws go and what sort of moronic process I use for placing the screws in the various bin compartments. Um, at least once that's done, that can be picked up straight away, so it's good. Uh, so, well, two successful jobs. One is a bit of a hack job with that uh, DC jack. And that's so common for that to happen where you order a part that's supposed to be for a specific laptop and you find that it's actually not quite the same. And yeah, and you've got to make some modifications there because I know the person would not want to wait another two weeks for yet another replacement part, which probably would be the same as the one that they just sent me. So you just can't really take that risk. 
Okay, well, leave it at that. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you as always next time. Until then, you all take care. I'll see you later.